एवरीवन वेलकम टू आईबीएम फाइनल डेमो आई एम हैविंग 13 प्लस ऑफ इयर्स 13 प्लस इयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन आईबीएम सीकेएम फैमिली आई हैव बीन वर्किंग विद डिजिटल बिजनेस ऑटोमेशन ऑफ आईबीएम प्रोडक्ट्स फ्रॉम ऑलमोस्ट 13 प्लस इयर्स एक्सपीरियंस ऑन आईबीएम फाइलनेट आई हैव वर्क्ड विद different version of filenet 4 4.5 5 5.2 and even 5.5 which is the latest one in, in the market i have experience with ibm case manager so case manager when introduced in this uh, version of 5.1 i started working with that uh, currently we are using 5.3.3 i have experience on content navigator which is again uh, came with the version of 5 so after filenet 5 Uh, content navigator and case manager came into picture. So I have development as well as administrative experience on all these products. When we work with IBM FileNet or case manager as a admin, we do have to work with WAS and DB uh, as they are very tightly coupled and are used as and when needed. Uh, good understanding about that. I have used. or worked with other products of IBM enterprise records manager which was earlier known as records manager and i have worked on IBM data cap IBM workstation and vpn some knowledge about IBM content collector so different products which i have worked on in this particular course about IBM filenet uh, will be not only covering IBM filenet but will be going with filenet case manager and navigator as a single product we will go to uh, we will start with an overview and introduction about the before knowing a language you should know about what that language is same way before knowing a product you should know that what that product is and what the concept behind that product is so we when then we start with the course we first come, uh, get into the introduction about that tcm concept which are there so this whole pilot product or the product is a name they all work around an tcm concept just like we, when we say about java or dot net we say that they work on a oop concept so okay? the tcm concept is there for all these products so we will be discussing about them then we will discuss about the architecture which binds case manager content navigator and filenet with each other how they are used at which layer uh, this product will be used how how they will be interacting with each other what protocols they will be using at which part which system would be calling the was where they will be deployed how do they connect with DB, what kind of calls they make to DB? All those things we'll be discussing when we go through this course. Uh, about IBM FileNet, when we start with uh, specifically with FileNet, we first uh, go into the WAS profile and we see that how do we create a data source, how do we work with object source, what all things we need from the WAS side. Uh, we we'll look into those things. What all ports space will be needing for? Uh, Uh, and what all ports we need to open, or what all ports can be shared to start working it, whether whether it's a secured port or whether it's a generated CDB port. All those details we'll be looking into, and we'll be working with that. Uh, Ace is one of the tool which is used by FileNet for its administrative task. Full form is administrative client for content platform engine. Uh, what is content platform engine? That we will look when we will go more deep down into the course. Then we have object stores, so we'll be working on object stores and different type of object stores. Basically, three types of the uh, object store in case manager: dot, dot, and staging. So design, target, and staging. We'll be working on them. Then how do we create classes? How do we add properties, choices? All those things we'll be working on. How do we add search or do search in FileNet? That we'll be working. Working upon, and, and all these things we'll be having a hands-on. It's not just the PPT that we'll be doing. So we'll actually see that how do we do all these. And then we have security. A topic on security is mainly to make you understand that what level of securities are being applied. How do we apply securities? What are different types of securities which, which are applied on different objects? Uh, what kind of access can be given? What kind of access can be restricted? All those things we'll uh, see when we cover the topic of security. And there are two more topics which are not. Directly used, but subscription is something which uh, we need with case manager. When when we have to trigger the workflows or we need to uh, put some kind of event level of triggering of some workflows, then we work on the subscription. So all those details we look into. And then marking set, another topic which is very important from the perspective of interview. Quite commonly in Uh, to understand the knowledge of FileNet. Then once we are through with FileNet, we will start working on the Case Manager. So Case Manager has its development tool as Case Builder. So we'll be working on Case Builder and uh, we'll be working on solutions, roles, in baskets. How do we create cases? 
how do we create stars all these things will be doing uh, and rock session we, we won't be going through the ppt but we'll actually be implementing one of the pro- uh, project by doing all these things so we'll have a with us uh which we'll be working on and we'll be creating a solution on those lines then we have to work on the step design and process design so to see how do we actually uh design a workflow so these two designers will be working on then we'll go through the pages so pages are the different kind of pages which are there in case manager and then which we see uh, while for, for the, from the end user perspective that what all he will see all those pages we will work on within pages you have views on the page what kind of views should be doing that thing we will uh, so design then we'll work from the administrative perspective so we'll work on the workflow search and workflow administration so that we will work on then uh, from case manager uh, process engine perspective what we what we will be looking at is the connection point and isolated region so these are again two major things which connect your uh, ilnet with case manager or in other words the content engine with your process engine so these these terms like uh, sound like a jargon at, at the moment so we will be going deep down into these things and we will be covering these words in the first three four sessions so that by the time we will be here we will be through uh, clear with uh, all these things then within workflow we will be understanding the rosters the concept of queues what all these concepts are and how do they work at the back end we will be working on that and as we have for file net we had uh, administrative client case same way for case manager we have administrative client known as schema so it will form a case manager administrative client so we will work through that and we will see that how can we uh, import export and deploy a solution from one environment to another environment in case manager there is a concept that we cannot directly develop a solution in higher environment that is in your sit ap or prod so you have to move the solution from the development development environment to higher environment so how do we do that that we will see uh, in this part then uh, of course if the items are locked then how an administrator can unlock them so kind of administrative task we will see another important topic which we will cover as a part of case manager administration side would be your project area so project area is uh, one of the very important part and uh, it actually helps you to differentiate between different topic or different object stores which are there in uh, case manager so that, that is another very important topic that we'll go through and we we'll go through it in detail about that then we'll also work on ibm navigator ibm content navigator is another product from ibm uh, ecm family and uh, in that we will uh, mainly work on the plugin which are there and the widgets we can uh, work on and uh, we'll discuss about the different desktops and layouts which are present in navigator so how to use them how can we change the layout for a uh, end user Uh, from from the end user perspective, so that we will see. We'll work on the admin as an administrator on the navigator, and then we'll look into the API and uh, EBS from a very high perspective. But but let me give you a start place where if you want to elaborate more, you can go ahead with that. So this is all about the course curriculum. What all we will be going to cover in this whole. Course, if if we go ahead with this. So, just to give you a brief about what Filenet exactly is, it's an as I said, it's a CM technology. So when I say CM CM technology, it's basically to manage the content of any enterprise. So it's called as enterprise content management. Uh, the term that is being used. So, which is which is as I said, that is used for managing any kind of content which is present in a uh, enterprise. Now, it's a very old terminology which is being used in the corporate world, but with ECM, a lot of other terms have already been uh, added to this whole umbrella. It's not that when I say managing a content, it only it only means to have a repository. That that was that was uh, that was a very old definition of uh, managing content. Nowadays, it's, it's more of managing the content with all kind of features that you can. add on and all kind of automation ai that we can introduce for having a ocr engine to read the data and then uh, apply rules on that all all those things are being termed as ecm uh, only and now even people have started using the terms like dba digital uh, business automation with with uh, the terms of digit, uh, digitalization these uh, terms have gone old but still the filenet 
as a product is still considered as one of the oldest products in market for uh, any ecm technology and filenet is not only being uh, referred as a old object but is one of the most reliable in terms of uh, the scalability so security these, these are the some terms which which are very much relevant with filenet and th- that is one of the reason that uh, despite of being very old and uh, kind of a heavy product uh, with so many components it still it is uh, being in the market and uh, one of the very leading products in the market for such, such a long time so filenet uh, itself was an o- company which uh, which was started uh, long back in 90 but uh, was then overtook by IBM uh, somewhere then it was in, in the versions of 4 and 4.5 it was taken by IBM then one or two releases happened with Filenet and IBM in collaboration and now it's completely a property of IBM and they, they own it completely they have merged multiple tools with it so as I said that the case manager, content navigator all these tools were later been developed by IBM and they were merged from Finance original product, so it's not that the only product has been sold, but it it it, it is still lies in the core, the backbone of the whole system. And uh, from the UI side, they keep on changing the things, and uh, they are there. As I said, that Filenet has many products under its umbrella, and which also consists of VPN tools. So we we'll discuss about this. Thing. Then I have only explained more about the workflows which are there. Filenet, as I said, is not only a repository but also something which helps you to automate your uh, system. So Filenet have a very very strong capability of uh, repository as well as a very efficient uh, system of uh, automating the workflows. So if in an organization there is a requirement of automating the flows and uh, then storing those. Document and repository. Those things are very easily been taken care by Filenet. For now, there are two products which which run for for the BPM part. One is IBM BPM, which is a, a advanced version of uh, an original product Lombardi, whereas uh, Case Manager has come out uh, as a enhanced feature of Filenet. So Filenet Process Engine is now acting more as a process designer and all are used in Case Manager, whereas Lombardi Designer, such as designer is used in uh, BPM, IBM BPM as a product. So we'll be covering IBM Case Manager in this course, uh, not the BPM part. As I said, that the best part is the categorization of content, like document or a file in object-oriented structure. So FileNet follows object-oriented approach in all its implementation. Uh, it is very much in line with your concept of classes and objects, and uh, all the concepts of which are being implemented in this particular. Product. As I said, that uh, this uh, it says the same thing. Like when we need application which demand workflow to be set up, manage electronic content, this product is very much used. So this is about FileNet as a product. What all uh, the features it can provide, where all it is used. Today, brief session about how understanding about the product and the, uh, the way you can uh, take it. Uh, we'll be going to a topic of object store. Uh, of course, if you are not aware of FileNet or have any basic understanding of uh, ECM, then probably this will not be easy for you to uh, take grasp. But uh, when we go through the course and reach to this, as I said, that in the course, uh, object to part is uh, somewhere around after six, seven classes. So definitely you'll be able to understand this uh, object to concept. But for today, I have taken this topic because uh, object store can be considered as a backbone of FileNet. As I said, that FileNet itself is a backbone of this whole ECM family for IBM. And if I talk about specifically to FileNet, then object store becomes a backbone of that whole product. Anything which goes in to FileNet is basically going into object store. So that is the core concept of Core definition of object story and so on. When we talk about any ECM product or any document management system, we think about a repository which will be dumping every document in there and then would be associating some properties or metadata around that uh, document so that whenever you need to retrieve it, you can easily retrieve it. In FileNet, that particular repository is termed as object store. So object store is a repository for storing objects. When I say objects, it means anything which is going into the repository. And as I said that uh, FileNet follows the object orientation concept very well. So anything which goes into FileNet is considered as an object. So whenever a document comes in, it goes into the repository as an object. And then 
filenet is a mechanism to see or to associate some property around that metadata. When, as I said, then it follows the concept of of hoop and it is having uh, everything as objects. So of course, those objects will come from some classes. I will be defining those classes for which those objects will be created. All those things we do in object store. So as I said, that object store manages documents plus information related to that document. So when I say information, it is the metadata or the property which is uh, around that object or that document. For for example, if I, I I take it as an example, whenever I will be putting, I need to put a document into my repository. I'll be saving it into FileNet. It will first ask me that under which class. I want to save it. So now those classes I would have defined earlier, and I would have said that whenever an object comes in, you ask for these classes, and they, you give the option, and then save it. There are different ways of doing it on the UI. That that as again going forward, you will be able to see. But in case if I am directly putting into an object uh, object store. Just we agree. Then also I have to put it under some class. That okay, this object is a this document is a object of this particular class. When I put it with that class, it will apply some security which are already part of that class. It will apply some property around that object which are again I have defined in that class. You can easily map this full con. It has with your class and object concept of a Java or .NET, whichever language you are comfortable with. You can easily think about the class and its object. And then the properties as a variable which you are defined in that class. So over here they define the property, and then the object which is being created that will have all those properties, and those values that you will enter will become the value of those properties, and that those will be stored in object store somewhere inside it for see, and whenever you need it, you will be able to check it out. Now these. Document could be structured, unstructured, semi-structured. All those things might happen at the back end. That 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 is irrelevant for for an object store. It has the capacity to store anything that is coming over there. Of course, we have limits like 4 GB, 6 GB, 8 GB. Limit of data can be stored. So that that depends on the version and the uh, how much you have allowed. So some uh, organization has restriction of 5 MB. So even at times you cannot store any document more than 5 MB. From IBM perspective, it allows up to 4 GB of data. So the, all those things might happen. But if your DB is now not that big, then of course you cannot store that much of data. All those things can be configured at the time of installation or even after uh, at the time of. Uh, From the administrative perspective, you can do all those. In FileNet, it's not that you can have only one object store. You can have multiple object store. So more than one object store can exist in FileNet, but it is not mandatory to have more than one object store. But of course, if you have to work on FileNet right after the installation, the first thing you have to do is so once the FileNet installation is done, you have to create a object store. So this, until that object store is The creation is not done from developer's perspective. The installation is not complete. Now, as I said, that uh, object stores have their database at the back end. So, FileNet has two kind of databases. One is your GCD, your global configuration database, and the second one is your object store DB. What is global configuration database? That we will discuss in detail later with the course. Just briefly and overview, it is the details about the FileNet system which you have. Installed on your machine, so any detail related to that will be stored in GCD. It's a global configuration. It it will not have any detail related to the end user or to the uh, to related to a developer or any anyone. That is all details related to FileNet system. That that's the only thing for now you should be having a concept. From object store database side, you can say that object store database is basically the database where the object store would be dumping all its content or all its document. Now, as I said, that uh, object store is a repository and it stores your document. Another concept which is there with FileNet is concept of document. So when we say in terms of a ECM product or in terms of file name. When we use the term document, it actually means two things. One is your metadata, and the other one is your content. Your content is the PDF file or the TIFF file, the image which we are getting, and we will be saving it. So that is one part, and that is called as content. The second part is your metadata, the property which are associated with it. When we say that an object is being stored in object store, it's actually the document which is stored in object store. That document means two things. Your metadata will go into DB for sure. That is that is the way it is being designed. So whatever properties are there, they will be defined in database and it will go into that DB. But your document have the option whether it wants 
I mean, when you are uh, configuring object store, you have the option whether you want to configure the object store to save the document, save the content basically into DB or you want to keep it into a some fl- file plan structure. So when I say file plan, it is like you, you define a space in your hard drive and whatever it will be uh, coming to that uh, object store, it will be storing that content into that particular location. So that is how file plan object store works. Now, as I said, uh, object, uh, the object store in FileNet is not only one, it is not that only you can have only one object store, but you can have multiple object stores. So for example, in case of case manager, you have three type of object stores. So design object store, your target object store, and your staging object store. You might have all three, you might have only two. So usually in your development environment, you will have design and target. In your production or UAP uh, environment, you will have staging and target. So that is how it has been designed and for each object store you will have one db so if, if i divide this part one db is your gcd the other db will have object store now this can be multiple db it's not that uh, you can have only the second db as object store so this this is a conceptual thing that's why i have mentioned over here that the second db can be multiple db so you have you can have multiple schemas uh, if you are using Oracle or you can have multiple DB in case of uh, MS SQL to have multiple object stores. So this is how the concept of object store works at the back end. So this is how a FileNet or processing, uh, FileNet administrative client looks like. As I said, A is the URL and this is your administrative control for content platform in So this is how our system looks like. And uh, as, as you can see, uh, as soon as you log in, you see um, global configuration and object store. So these are the two DBs which are defined. They will have all the details related to FileNet global configuration whereas this one will have all the details related to your object source. Now within object source can have multiple object source. So this is the uh, a heading but within this there these are the multiple object source and each object store will have its own database of the backend. Within the object source you have classes, roles, all the things which will be doing in a in a file system that will be going over here. For example, as I said, that file net works on a concept of OOPs where you have classes and all of this. These are the classes. As I said, you have a concept of document. The document has content and metadata. When I say metadata, it means the properties which are there. So these are the properties associated with this particular class. These are the properties which are associated with this particular class. Now, there is a concept of inheritance. So, these all class will inherit the security from this. They will inherit the properties from the document class. All these things will happen. And we will look into it in detail when we go through all these things. But basically, this is how object store looks like and what all details it has within it. Those are the things here. Today, as it is an overview session, we are more discussing on the theoretical part. But once we start with the hands-on, we will actually be working over here. And we'll be seeing that how all these things work on and what all these things are. Now, about this technology, FileNet. Uh, and its market. So as I said, that FileNet itself is not only a one uh, one product, but it has so many products associated with it, and where FileNet works as a core to all those products. So nowadays, now if you you might have uh, heard about it, if if you are uh, into this field, you might have heard about about the top. It's like Navigator. So now Navigator is becoming a single UI for all these products which we are seeing here. So even for Enterprise Record, for BAO, BPM, even DataCap, I'm not sure about content collector, but DataCap, Space Manager, all these are having Navigator as a single UI. So if you are through with Navigator, you can work on any of these topics which are there at the back end. And uh, all these topics will need, uh, anyone who is working on any of these products will need a navigator developer to configure their UI. So that is one concept which is coming and which is already there. Data cap, another one of the very strong tools which uses the proxy, different proxy. Of course, it, it is from IBM and it uh, works very well with IBM file content uh, repository. Uh, as I said, that uh, when, when data cap uh, scans the uh, pages and do the OCR, all the concepts are uh, done, it saves those documents into some repository and th- that repository out of box is being available for FileNet. Of course, if you, I mean, if 
there is a requirement in the different department that the or, or the customer have some specific requirement that they want to do it with some other cost of course it has to be out of box it will be fine at the cost so these are the technologies which are very much in demand they are, they are used in different domains as per their requirement they have different implementation and they as a whole work in a end to end ecm product to, to provide a full from the scanning to the archiving uh, this This particular family was there. There are some other products which I have not mentioned because they are not that relevant nowadays, uh, especially after the introduction of navigator and page manager, like uh, products like e-form, form manager. So those products are not in uh, use, but uh, of course even they were there. Uh, prior to these products, and they were very much in demand. Earlier. Then the domains, as I was saying, there are multiple domains where uh, FileNet is used. Uh, one of the most, the major portion of the market. Which, which is being captured for finance is from the financial domain. Financing, as they have a very high requirement of uh, automation, as well as to have a very strong and secured repository. As I said, that finance is one of the very strong feature of finance is its security and uh, scalability. And these two things are very much needed for any banking firm. That's the reason it is being used a lot in the banking domain. Uh, insurance domain again for very fast access of uh, flow of uh, their work. So even they use a lot uh, the case manager and uh, of course the policy at the back end will be used as file. In domain sector, a major market for file. Other than that, uh, some ma- uh, market is being given by the uh, government. So there are a lot of government products projects which are going on where uh, of course the content core domain is file, uh, but uh, now they have. Started using data cap and case manager for their workflows and scanning purposes. Real estate, another domain which uses a lot of enterprise records as a product. So real estate and legal, of course, these two uses enterprise records a lot because of uh, a, a condition that they need to have the records kept untouched for a very long duration, and they, they, they want to have an archival process of the flow. So they they use enterprise records a lot. So these are the major things. But uh, other than this, also it's not that uh, this is uh, only thing where it is being used. But it is used a lot, and uh, we have seen uh, a lot of implementation in uh, air space in industry so like Boeing has completely been developed. Uh, and there, Boeing has used a lot of uh, file net implementation. Uh, then, then there are different uh, domains, but uh, these are the major ones which uses and we we'll come across one of these industries uh, in a very different way if if you are working on this technology. The the market capture from the global perspective we discuss US and uh, Arab that is Middle East. So these two have a very high utilization of file net technology. So they they. Uh, depend a lot on this technology and they use this technology a lot. Then there are some implementation in UK, Europe. They they are more into the data cap side. They are not yet moved to the case manager, but they are using data cap uh, a lot. And of course, as I said, the file net remains as the core. So with data cap, they are using file net a lot. So data cap navigate, but case manager is yet to make a case in European market. So this is this product is missing on that. Then these are the certifications which are available, and uh, said that the uh, certifications are, are of course uh, the face certificate. Uh, you, you around hundred to two hundred dollar is the uh, charges which are there, and you have to visit a center to get these certifications. These are all our online certificates, all online registration on the IBM portal, and then uh, you have to visit a PSM U center or some. Certification centers that they provide. Uh, with the uh, and I don't say that once you do this course, you'll be able to clear the certification. I don't claim anything like that because the certification needs a very much hands-on knowledge. Comes when you start working on a product. So it's not that uh, on the first day after completion of the training, you'll be able to clear the certification. You have to do a hands-on. You have to get your hands dirty, and then of course, if, if you are doing uh, those tasks, you'll be able to uh, you. you You will be able to clear all these certificates. There are badges which are available, and these are the badges which are freely available. So you can test your skill set whether you are able to clear those uh, badges or not uh, right after the completion of this training. These badges are online uh, uh, tests which you have to take. Uh, there is a, there are conditions which you have to fulfill, like uh, you have to complete two badges or two certificates. 
to go there. There are more badges which are available, but they need full-time training from IBM centers. And th- those are some other way kind of uh, badges which are there. But uh, these, these badges are available and you can take on these badges. Uh, IBM certification as well as badges are very much being asked and when you, and they, are, they are very much in demand uh, when when you look for a job or look for a role change. These are uh, very much uh, very respected kind of certificates because they are not easily uh, cleared and it's not that you have a dumb kind of you can clear them. So they, they have a good respect when you become a certified professional from IBM to be certified. And uh, for FileNet professionals, I mean, as, as well said, uh, FileNet uh, ECM family, uh, they, they all are considered as a niche skill. It's not that uh, you can have a uh, skill set available in the market easily. So they, those are considered as a niche skill and they uh, are quite in demand as in, depending on the market. Of course. During this course, we will do hands-on on these two projects. So, while doing a basic training, we will be working on a, we will take a case scenario of applying for the training in mind magic. In this particular training, we will only be uh, doing a touch base with the basic concept of FileNet, case manager and content navigator. We will not go much into detail about this particular training, but this will help you out with understanding about the concept of all these three projects, uh, three products which I have discussed. So you will be able to define a class. So when, when we will be doing uh, a knowledge sharing session initially when I'll be sharing my uh, sharing the uh, giving you a brief understanding about the, the topic. This project we will take as a base and whatever we'll do, for example if you have to see how a property is being added. So those properties we will be taking in terms of the this particular project. The first project applying for the training in my magic. So we will have a four step uh, workflow where we'll be able to see that what kind of work uh, steps, how do we add a work Said, how do we as a personal designer, how do we add properties, how do we make choice list, how do we define a uh, in basket or a role or what are pages, where are the views, all those things we will be doing on the first project. So that would be more like your hands-on project. Second would be your, sorry, first would be your understanding project. So that will help you in understanding the different concepts. The second project would be where I will be giving you a case that what all properties you need to define, what all Goals you have to define so it would be more like a BRD or a certification document which I will share with with you and you have to work on that case and then it would be a reverse creative kind of thing and you will be doing the development and I would be looking at it and uh, seeing that uh, where we have reached with that. So that second project would be your actual hands-on project where you will be doing the things and you will be understanding the system in detail and with all the concepts. We will assist you with uh, setting up of the VM, VM which we will be sharing with you and we will help you out in setting this VM with you. This VM has a mix, minimum requirement of 8 GB RAM and that is a minimum requirement as I said. So. If you have a 8 GB RAM, you'll be able to run this VM, but that would be very slow because if you allocate 5.5 or 6 GB of RAM to the system, your system, uh, sorry, to the VM, your system would be very slow. So the state VM size is actually 16 GB. Uh, then it works fine. It allocates 10 GB to, to your VM and then 6 GB for your system. So then, then it works fine. Anything more than that is definitely we need Windows OS 64 bit for running the VM. You should have admin access. Of course, you can't, uh, can't think about running the VM on your, uh, Office laptop with uh, very limited access because you need, it, you need to run through things, you need to install through things. Then you need, uh, so this VM itself is uh, around 75 to 80 GB space. It needs that much of space to install, so definitely the recommended hard disk space is 150 GB. On the VM, you need Java 32 bit, so that we will provide you as a jar file uh, in here and you can install it here with uh, whatever additional jars we need to run this. Uh, uh, that I will share with you. I will share some code with you for customization and uh, whatever topics we will be covering, I will be sharing those uh, snippets with you so you can work on, on those. Okay. When we have to work on the EDS or on the API, then we need to set up the applet. So in case if you are interested in and do that kind of or that level of development and you are fine with that, then we will definitely be working on that. Then other than this uh, course, what Additional things we'll get is uh, 
you will have all the videos of the special which you will be having so in case if you are not getting the immediate work but if you have something in line after two months or three months and by that time if you think that you will not be able to remember the things you can go through the sessions as an individual so those will be shared with you of course the documentation wherever needed we, we don't have much documentation to be done because we for the students and put some more rely on the hands on and the under part of course Case, as I said, that I'll be sharing the BRD in case of the project and all those things. So definitely, those will be any jar, any code that that all those things we will be sharing with you. Uh, the references which we need to refer during the development, those all links I will be sharing with you. If in case you are not able to download the PDF, uh, comment, I, I can share those also over the mail. So all those things we will be sharing with you. Uh, we will help you out with some sample resume. So how a uh, final resume looks like and what all kind of topics they mention in the resume. Once we are through. With this topic, we'll be working on that, and uh, not only sharing those sample resume, but we will, uh, if you want, you can actually work on your resume as well, preparing your resume, and if you need any kind of discussion, and that definitely we will have that. Of course, if you have any doubt after all these sessions are done, so you can have one. One or two doubt clearing sessions once the whole curriculum is completed. Preferably, if you have any doubt, you ask it within the session or in the next session. But just in case, if after all the sessions are done, you feel that there are some topics or some things you which you find are not very clear to you, definitely we can get it done. And uh, within the course also, we go to different topics, and in the topics I share the questions which are being asked in interviews. So we do have this training from that perspective also. So I'll be telling you about the topics which you might find which you might find handy when you are facing an interview. So all those things, we in question, city question. Will be going into all the course. If you have any question related to this demo, just please let us know. Uh, contact the person with you. You have our email ID. You have our number. Happy to call. And, uh, and any specific details you need, just let us know. Thank you.